Welcome to Yes Catholic, the place where real people share their real stories and realize it is all God's grace on the move. I'm your host, David Patterson, and every week we hear a new guest share their story of how they came to give their yes to Jesus and his church. So let's get started. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so right now, uh, I run an Instagram account called Truth Charting. Its main mission is to show young people that being Catholic isn't boring. Uh, so yeah. that's the that's the current mission right now. What we do is we try to make content that is comparable to secular media. So what I do is I go out and I find the most compelling and most successful content creators in the secular realm, and I try to Catholicize it, um, just make it interesting and try to find cool things happening within the Catholic Church that are very exciting and highlight those for young people. Um, it's been an absolute like blast just the past two years because I get to just do, um, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber since I was like a, you know, middle schooler. So, uh, yeah. it, was a, it was absolute joy, but yeah, that's, that's the main mission right now. And, um, it's really starting to, um, I mean, it's just started being my full-time job last year. So, um, it. yeah, it's a joy. Well, let's get to know you a little more with the rapid fire right? youth ministry. You're probably, you're ready for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Describe yourself as a kid in three words. Okay. Uh, fun, happy, and hyper. Hyper? Okay. Would yeah. you say you're a morning person or a night owl? Morning person. Morning person? Like to wake up early? Okay. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Teleportation. It's funny. That's been a common response. It's good. Yeah. You still yeah. want to be on a plane for hours and hours to get to a different yeah. country? Travel is the bit. Yeah, I, I like traveling, but I don't like flying that much. Understood. Okay, go to order at a coffee shop. Iced vanilla latte. Could it be seasonal? Do you do you switch it up based on season? I do. Or? I do. I do. I do subscribe to the pumpkin spice latte when it's when, okay. it's, when it's in season. That is my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm proud to say it. <laughs> no judgment here tonight. It's all good. Uh, go to short prayer. Maybe the Anna McChristie. And with Christy? The yeah, Soul of Christ Sanctify Me, that one. Do you ever have a, a prayer as you're editing? Just curious. Ooh, great question. No, not usually. Not like a rote one. Um, very often before I film, I will ask the Holy Spirit to come in, but it'll usually just be kind of like a, a freestyle. Come Holy, come Holy Spirit yeah. kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Okay. Do you have a favorite book of all time or one of? Ooh, great question. The Bronze Bow was one that I read uh, pretty early on. That was one of the first books I ever read was The Bronze Bow. Do you know about it? I don't know. Okay. It was pretty cool. It, it's like a, a historical fiction about a kid who grew up at the same time as Jesus was like walking around. So it, like Jesus has a cameo in the story, but it's not about him. It's about this kid. It's Interesting. Cool. Is it? So it's a kid's book. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's like a young adult situation. Okay, I'll have to yeah. check it out. All right. If you could have coffee with any saint, who would it be? Blessed Carlo Acutis. Yeah. That was your quote, right? Yeah. Yeah. Big, big like uh devotion to Blessed Carlo Acutis. He's kind of the one of the main motivators behind what what I do. Yeah. Did you ask for his intercession as you go about your your day as well? Um not on my day to day. I wish I did. I should, I should more. Um, but the, yeah. the main story there was when he got beatified, I was watching his live stream and I was just like bawling my eyes out because he was, um, it was, there was, there was a sense of like, he was just an ordinary kid who just like accepted God's grace at every moment he could. Um, mm -hmm. and then he was inspiring tons and tons of, you know, millions of people around the world. Um, and me, you know, just another kid uh, around the world in America a um, couple years after he passed away. Um, right. And then I had the opportunity to go to Italy and sit next to his grave. And um, wow. just a very, very beautiful moment in prayer there regarding truth charting and the mission that I feel called to and what he did with creating his website on Eucharistic Miracles. Yeah. Yeah, I believe he is a powerful intercessor for our generation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, last one. If you could ask God one question, what would it be? Why did you make mosquitoes? Right? Get that. Yeah. Especially up here in Canada, man. It's it's the next level. Oh, are they bad up there? 
I mean, it depends where you are, but yeah. they're you know I've they're slower up north. The mosquitoes down here in in Florida, they're like yeah. they zip. They they go really fast and they're a little bit smaller. But whenever okay. I go up to Ohio, those things are huge. Just fun fun little fact for you. Uh, yeah, Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> little fun fact of the day all right man well you flew through the rapid fire let's uh kick things off with an opening prayer yeah and then we'll have you share your story in the name of the father so, and of the son and of the holy spirit amen amen come holy spirit come holy spirit come holy spirit amen in the name of the father amen. the son the holy spirit amen all right, man, let's dive right in. Where does your story begin? Yeah, so I grew up in a really pretty devout Catholic family um, here in Orlando, Florida. And uh, it was homeschooled growing up, so I had a lot of free time. I would finish my schoolwork usually around like 10 or 11 or something like that. So um, I would have a lot of free time. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Homeschooling is goaded, Loki. Um, everyone should look into it. Well, not yeah. everyone should do it, but it's um, it worked out very well for me. I can I can always uh, vouch for it. This but, is not a paid sponsorship, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so really beautiful family, really wonderful parents. Um, and then I have three siblings. I'm the youngest. And we would go to this camp every every year since i was one this camp up in ohio uh called the apostolate for family consecration and this camp was just like a catholic campground where you could go on retreat with your family for a whole week and so everyone who's there is like this is their vacation for the year um and it was just a beautiful beautiful place it was my favorite place in the world i mean um these people were wonderful people um, it was always a blast and everyone's always in a good mood because like they're on vacation. Uh, we're here to to have a good time, to go to daily mass, to pray together, to, you know, be as a family and to hang out with your friends. All right. So I had this wonderful view growing up of this extraordinary goodness that existed within Catholicism, this extraordinary beauty um, within Catholic community as well. So I... I got to see that growing up and then I would come home to um, Orlando and Orlando is a pretty like new diocese. There's not a whole lot of Catholic history in Orlando just because it's a new city period. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was like, there was wonderful, wonderful people down here as well um, that we were really good friends with. Um, But I always would point to that camp as being the place where I really was introduced to like dedicated devout Catholic community and, um, just like I was able to see so much vibrance and life in the spirit up at that camp. So I was, um, I was involved with my youth group as well. Uh, it was pretty typical, like Catholic youth group kid. Um, and then when I was 17, I went up and I volunteered at that camp. And this is like when stuff really started to, to like start a fire in me was I got to experience the Holy spirit doing beautiful things in the lives of these young people at the camp in the lives of um, the whole families, you know, watching people really just um, get healed from like stuff that they were dealing with with their parents on on adoration night. Their parents would like write them letters and stuff, and uh, we would get to see just a lot of young people um, have wonderful experiences with the Lord there. So I came home from volunteering at that camp, uh, which was a life changing experience, and I. Uh, yeah, that was probably the best summer of my life. In the most, even though we were, high, I was high school missionary. Um, so like we had a pretty, like pretty strict chaperone system um, or, uh, you know, like camp counselor system. Like we, it was strict. Basically, we weren't like, uh, we weren't considered to like have a whole lot of freedom. But that was for me, that was my first time spending anything over a week away from home without my parents. So for me, it was a very freeing experience. Um, And so that's like my first thing that I point to is like me making my faith my own and like choosing it and being like, yep, this is, this is for me. Making it personal. Exactly. Yeah. Came home, continued helping out at retreats 
uh, with my local parish. Uh, and I had known from the age of eight that I wanted to go into filmmaking because I was homeschooled. And when I was done with school, I would watch YouTube tutorials on, you know, how to film and how to edit and how to do visual effects. So, uh, but how, did that, started, how did that start? Like what inspired you to actually just decide to go on YouTube and start looking that up? Well, there is a movie called the crocodile hunter with Steve Irwin. Um, yeah. and I watched the behind, we had like the DVD with the special features on it and I would watch the behind the scenes yeah. and I saw a green screen and I was fascinated by the fact that like they could just replace the background. So my entire like, uh, filmmaking journey started with me trying to do green screen work on my oh, yeah. gateway four gigabyte Ram PC at home. Um, which was just like, <laughs> Yeah, it was a blast. Uh, it was very slow, but I did yeah. I did learn how to do it, you know. Um, so cool. that's how it began. And that's where my interest began in it. Um, and it just all took off from there. Um, by the time it was time for me to graduate high school, I was really dead set on doing film. But uh, I wasn't sure if like film school was going to be the vibe and um my mother um was a incredible intercessor for us my mother was constantly praying for us as yeah. as was my father really good parents i can't stress that enough um and so one day and i knew that she had been praying about this i was visiting film schools i had flown out to california to check one out but it wasn't like i was like it's okay i guess but i don't feel like i wouldn't yeah i just wasn't vibing with it i guess feeling it. we get a letter in the mail and it wasn't in an envelope it had just been like put in there it was like just like a no stamp nothing just like a piece of paper and it was a letter that said like i'm a location scout for tv shows and commercials where we're filming something nearby and we would like to use your property to park our catering trucks on we're gonna have like a crew of 50 here um wow. and so they it was a letter basically asking my parents to rent their property out to like have as a base camp for a nearby television show. Um, and so my, my mother contacted them and basically said, if you, if you let my son intern on your set um, next, you know, in the coming weeks, I will, uh, I'll, we'll let you guys use our, our property. And so they, they rented our property. I was invited to be an intern on the, on the shoot. And after that, they invited me to come back for their shoot that was at a different location. Um, cool. And then after that, they started hiring me as a production assistant to just work on commercials and mama and knows. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and that was like a really, really big deal. Um, Cause people are going to film school just to get an opportunity like that. Um, and it just was quite literally handed to me. Um, so I'm, that's one thing that I'm very grateful and, and really attribute to the, the intercession of my mom. Um, yeah, so I started working freelance film gigs, commercials, uh, TV shows, movies, stuff like that here in Orlando, decided not to go to film school because I was already working my way up in it. Um, and what I was that pretty, like for you? Oh, it was, it was scary. Uh, yeah. it's pretty cutthroat the film industry. So yeah. if you like, yeah, it, it can be cutthroat, especially in LA. The Orlando film industry is a little bit more chill. But okay. um, yeah, it, it was a little bit interesting because I was homeschooled and Catholic growing up. So not necessarily like used to the secular way of life. Um, so yeah. there was a little bit of like getting used to uh, just getting used to secular workforce stuff. Um, and the language on film sets can be pretty like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's film. It's, you know, there's not a whole lot of like morals going on there. Sure. And actually one day we were working on a, on a commercial for an insurance company and there was like a, a Ouija board on set. Yeah. And it was after like an 18 hour day that I had been there. And I, I had gotten there at 5 AM and it was nearing like 1 AM now. Um, I don't know if I did that math right, but, uh, I realized that I was putting my heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears into this, um, the film industry, trying to work my way up. And 
Like, I just can't get behind the stuff that we're making. Like the, the stuff we're making, like I have no say over. Um, a lot of it's just like corny commercials. Um, and yeah, I, the experience was really cool. Um, I loved getting to see, you know, 50 person sets with super duper expensive equipment and lights and stuff like that. But um, I just couldn't get behind the content we were making. So I decided to, I decided to kind of like take a step back and, and just try to be more selective with the jobs that I took in film and yeah. began working for my, um, I got it. My pastor offered me a job at our parish as a communications coordinator. Okay. Yeah. That was a wonderful season. I actually really, really enjoyed working for the parish. Uh, so I would make the bulletin, run the website, social media, oh, cool. videos, all that stuff. Yeah. Really good stuff. So I worked there for three years. Um, by the third year, I had started going full time there and was also added as a youth minister at the church. So it was like a co-youth coordinator. Wait, um, so wait, wait, wait. You're doing communications and youth ministry at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. I was like the parish resident young person. So I was okay. just kind of like, yeah, all the tech stuff I would take care of. And then also all of like some of the youth ministry stuff that I had like a Basically, the way that the youth ministry thing worked was I would kind of like plan the youth nights and yeah. MC them. And then okay. I had a co-youth minister that would take care of like all of the logistics of it, which was like, okay. honestly, it was, it was a blast. I didn't have to worry about how the food got there or yeah. uh, like how the permission slips got signed. I just got to show up and make the content for the night. But, but you yeah, must have been that busy. was juggling all that i mean i was a youth minister for like close to seven years that's a <laughs> it's a lot right there yeah yeah it was it was a lot um we had a pretty small youth group it wasn't it wasn't like a huge deal um but i and i also had some help in the communications department by the time that okay. i um that i started doing youth ministry as well that's good um yeah so one day i got a call while i was working at the church it was from a, a family friend that we knew from that camp that i had grown up going to his name is john andrew o'rourke he owns a like a production company and he had uh ran across some tiktok that i had made in 2020 and it was it was it had nothing to do with the faith it was just like a funny tiktok where i bought a billboard um in in the tiktok just for a meme um and it showed up on his for you page and it was like, he was just really impressed by the creativity and the fact that it was very outside the box. Yeah. And I hadn't talked to him in years, but he knew he was, a, he knew I was in the film. So he called me and he just asked like what I was up to. He told me he was really impressed with like the fact that he saw my video on TikTok, And we began conversations over the next few weeks about basically he just saw potential in me. Um, and really encouraged me to, to take a leap of faith, um, and to just really get back into film in a, in a very dedicated way. So wow. I expressed my desire to him, like my, 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 my main desire, like if I could be doing whatever I wanted right now, I would start a YouTube channel that was a Catholic YouTube channel that showed people that being Catholic isn't boring. And I would, um, do you know the YouTube channel? Yes. Theory not familiar man no okay there's a there's a youtube channel called yes theory and it's a group of guys who just travel around the world and do really crazy stuff they'll do like 24 hours in paris with no wallet and they just get like sent there oh, okay. um, all they have is their passport and they like don't have anything and they they have to like find a place to to stay and have to right. ask strangers to buy food for them things like that um so they do these really interesting things and and they were getting uh very successful at the time uh, so I was like, okay, so there's a, there's a market for it. Their format of video works. People watch it. It gets views. Um, and they're, they're secular, but they're encouraging people to get outside their comfort zone. Their, their entire like, uh, motto was seek discomfort. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, I love that. If I could steal it, I would. Um, so the, that's when I, told John Andrew like, yeah, if I could be doing anything I wanted, that's what I would be doing. And John Andrew encouraged me to take the leap of faith. He said, uh, John, I'm 30 now. 
and you're 21. And if I could tell myself at 21 anything, I would say, take more risks, take the risk now, take it early on. Because if you're 21 and you go broke and you go live with your parents again, nobody cares. You're 21. That's expected. But if you're 30 and you go broke and you go live with your parents, then, then it's a little bit different. Um, so I, it was scary, but I went for it. I, I quit my job at the parish, um, which I loved, but I, I just felt like um, a fire and I felt like I could do more. So I did started you, working. Did you feel a sense of peace when you made that decision to take that leap? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, it was also like, I did love my job at the parish. Uh, it was also stressful. And, and in some ways it was hard to see. And this is where truth treading like came out of was yeah. I would see 80, 90 kids a year go through confirmation class. Um, and that was their only view of Catholicism was the classroom. Um, and that's like, that's not the catechist's fault. That's not the DRE's fault. That's not necessary. That's not necessarily even the parish's fault. Um, it, you know, you could, you could look at the parents, you could say like, why, why do we not see these kids at Sunday mass? But um, what I realized is like, the kids live on their, on the phone. Um, and the mm-hmm. statistics show that the kids in that age range, uh, in that age range are spending seven to eight hours a day on their phone. Yeah. So, my my brain started like churning and I was like, okay, how can I show them the vibrant view of Catholicism that I had growing up? How can I show them this like exciting and not boring and really fun way of life? Um, like how can I bring that to them? And there was an amazing opportunity there with with YouTube, with online content for me to be able to tell a really good story and put it in front of them. Um, so I I thought about it and I was like, okay, like when you, when you start any business, you think about where is my target audience? Like, where does my target audience live? Mm -hmm. Um, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna sell military surplus, it makes sense to go near a military base. Uh, for me, if I'm going to mission to young people, they live on the internet. So it it makes sense to start, start, start the business there. Um, so I started truth charting based off of yes theory. Um, and we, I think I'm trying to remember what our first video was. Um, it was, so John Andrew basically kind of joined the team and just, he was like a mentor for me. And he, he got me a lot of film work to pay the bills basically while I was trying to build truth charting up. So for the past two years, I've been doing freelance film work, uh, camera operation in the Catholic promotional film, uh, sector. So I, I left secular film and went into just Catholic stuff, um, which is like travel shoots, maybe like five to 10 people cruise, um, at most. But, um, and that was also a blast. I loved that too. So we, um, we just started making these fun YouTube videos. I would go out to these caves with my friends and we would do a, a worship session inside the cave and film and record it. And then we would go make our own retreat out in the woods and record that. And then, um, one time on the way to the retreat, we got caught in a flash flood and the Lord just started like offering storylines to me as, as I would be out on these, um, like these fun little adventures that I was filming. The Lord just began to confirm that what I was doing was, you know, probably his will because of the storylines that he was like offering me for, um, for what I was doing. Yeah. And it was just like a little bit too convenient. So I was like, okay, Lord, I will, I will continue if this is what you want. Um, and we'll, uh, let's see, I went, I had an opportunity to go to Peru, um, a couple years ago. And that was a really big, like turning point in my life. Um, basically I, I didn't have a passport. And I didn't have the money to go. And I told my mom about this opportunity. And my mom is like kind of the, she was the worry type. Um, She would be like, you know, John, maybe you should like, maybe you should just stay in in the country. That that was kind of like my mom's main like function was like, she would worry about her children and she like, didn't really want us to go do dangerous things. But when I told her about this mission trip, she was like, I think you should go. 
And wow. I was like, okay, if mom, if like my yeah. mom, the worrier is telling me to go on this mission trip, like there must be something spiritual going on that I should really read into. Yeah. So I looked into how I could get a passport in two weeks. And that's like pretty miraculous. That's like, that's a tough thing to do to get a passport that quickly. And I was able to just like pull some strings and like buy a plane ticket. Like I just bought the cheapest international plane ticket I could buy. And then I showed up in Miami at the passport office with a plane ticket. And I was like, I have a plane that leaves in 72 hours. Can I, can I get a passport? What? And that worked. So, um, what? yeah, you have to make it an worked. appointment and there's some, there's some other things, but it did work. Yeah. I got my passport and then, um, a very generous, um, couple that we know from our parish, just like they found out that I was going and they're like, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll sponsor you. Like we'll pay for wow. you. Yeah. It was an absolute joy. So I went on that trip and the, the trips on my YouTube channel, it was uh, really fun and adventurous and beautiful and, and spiritual. Um, and when I came home, I ended up moving in into a house with all of the guys that I went on that mission trip with. Like oh, as cool. all of the guys that we, that were on that trip, we all moved into the same house when we came back to Orlando. Um, and that's where I live now. That's where I'm recording. Oh, yeah. It's this men's house. I live with seven other guys. I think if there's, if they're still here, they're, they're downstairs watching this live nice. uh, on the TV. <laughs> What's up, boys? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to Jacob. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the story and that's kind of where I am now. Um, and then just, um, just recently, about a year ago, I had an opportunity. One of my roommates got married and moved out and, uh, he went to Italy and he was, they were planning to meet the Pope. So they f also flew me out to take photos with them, to take yeah. photos for them. And so I made some truth shredding content while I was out there. That's when I got to sit next to blessed Carlo Acutis's tomb. And this okay. was another like really big turning point for truth charting was yeah. basically I sat there and I was just, I had such a beautiful experience while I was in Italy because I didn't get a SIM card on purpose. I just didn't want to use my phone. So I, the only, only time I could use my phone is if I could like find Wi-Fi up there. Right. Um, and so I just had this beautiful experience off of my phone. And I was walking around Italy in the beautiful countryside in Assisi. So I was just sitting there next to Carlo Acutis's tomb, like praying about like, is what I'm doing actually good for humanity? Like, is what I'm doing with online content actually encouraging people to use their phones more? Is this bad? Is this like, is what I'm doing like ultimately just what I want? Is it just for the fame? Is it just for the clout? Is it just because I want, always wanted to be a YouTuber? Um, and I just asked that question and like, I just got answers immediately. And I was like, no, it was like, it, it was, it was, it was like, I looked at us, uh, you know, a beatified saint, uh, you know, soon to be saint right in front yeah. of me yeah. who had created a website documenting Eucharistic miracles to try to show people that the Eucharist is real and that Jesus was serious when he was talking about it in the Bible. Yeah. And it was just a justification. It was like, it was a permission slip for me to be doing what I'm doing. And it was, uh, I, I definitely, I wept, um, in a, in a really big way once again. Um, and that just really solidified that connection with blessed Carlo Acutis that I had already felt during his beatification about a year prior. And was there a word that you received during that time that led you to tears? Yeah, I, th I think it was, it, it was just like the, the permission because yeah. I, until that point, I had always been wrestling with this. Like this doesn't seem like there's like a whole lot of support or encouragement in this area because there's so much pushback on social media in mm -hmm. the Catholic world. Like you'll tell somebody you run a social media ministry and usually they'll be like, Oh yeah, I don't use social media. Um, and like, yep. that's good. Don't. Um, but like, there's there's a certain calling and there's people there and where there are people there are often people called to be missionaries to those people and so yeah. um that was like that was just a huge permission slip and justification that like what i'm doing is okay and not only mm -hmm. is it okay but it is in fact what i'm called to do um so that's why i cried was because i was on i was i was 
like kind of unsure about that until that moment when it was like really just confirmed. And the Lord asked me to go about it um, in a radical way, in a Mm -hmm. totally surrendered way. And in a like all in, it was, it was about going all in. Um, And so I, I think in that moment, I was just kind of like, yeah, I was, I was like looking for something radical to do. And my hair was about as long as it is now when I was there. So I just like, as soon as I um, was done with Blessed Carlo Cudis, I went up to the balcony in the Airbnb that I was staying and I just like shaved. I didn't shave my head, but I like cut my hair. I cut a bunch of my hair off just as like a radical step to remind myself that that happened. Um, Mm. So that was, that was a really cool, uh, and it was also just super dramatic. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of like that, you know, I, I like to just make dramatic moves to, to remind myself and also just as, as like symbolic gestures, um, I think are really important. So to being all in, I love that yeah. image that you used in the recent video about the Island. You kind of want to speak to that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I love that image that you used, man. It was fire. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the image is basically, Gen Z uses the internet as if it's a place that they go. It's mm-hmm. it's no longer like a tool that you use every once in a while, but this is really a, a place that we live. Um, for better or for worse, we're doing business here. We're playing here. We're entertained here. We're connecting with people here. We're talking to people. Um, basically, almost everything um, that you do in the real world they're, they're making ways for you to do it online. And so more and more people are going to live there. Is that, uh, is that a good thing? Is a great question. And and like the answer is pretty obvious, probably not. But the fact of the matter is like, there's people there. And even if there's an Island that's going to sink and it has thousands and thousands of people on it, um, it seems it seems consistent with the Lord's heart that he would send missionaries to that Island to yeah. make sure that those people know the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Um, yeah. So uh, basically the, the question that was raised to me a couple of years ago from a friend was like, do we sanctify the Island or do we evacuate it? Do we try to make this Island like a Catholic place? Do we try to baptize it and make it beautiful and, and try to, you know, push down all the, the sin and the crap that's on the internet and try to uphold the goodness or do we just try to get everyone off of it? Are we just there? Are we only on the island to try to ship people off of it? Um, and then when you read when you read some of the church documents on on new evangelization, it's 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 not really saying that this is a bad thing. It's saying that actually we have a great opportunity here with the internet. And so I think yeah. the answer to the question is both. I think we're trying to sanctify the island, and we're also trying to make sure that people realize that this isn't real life. This is like, you, you shouldn't live here because it's not the life that God gave you. This is a man-made virtual reality. Um, yeah. and it can be used in a good way. And that's what we, tr- that's what we try to do. You, you and I, um, and, uh, and a bunch of other really awesome Catholic creators that we get to, that we get to work with here. Um, mm-hmm. but I think that, that the answer to the question is, is both. We, we need to try to make this a better place and also get people to go live a life. I love that. Yeah. And how did you come up with the, I don't know if you shared already, but you came up with the name of truth charting. Yeah. The name uh, came to be when in conversations with my older brother, Jim and my confirmation sponsor, Joseph. Uh, we, originally we were going to start like a trio with it. Um, eventually it, it ended up just being me uh, because they both got jobs and, and, went you know did what they had to do um we we made a couple pillars of what we wanted this to be like and um truth charting really resonated with me because of the the word charting is like discovering you get to go adventure and make a map like that that's what charting means is to go like chart uncharted territory you're 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 making a map of an area that is already there but you're, you're going to discover it. And wow. then what are we charting? Like it's truth. We, we want to bring people to the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that life with Christ is an absolute bonkers adventure and it's not boring. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dude, that's amazing. Sorry, I didn't know that part. That's that's fire. Yeah. Thank you. Like the uncharted territory in the digital as a digital mm-hmm. missionary. Yeah. I did not mm-hmm. realize that. I love that explanation. One of the questions that came in earlier in the week was how do you edit your videos? What inspires your storytelling style? Nice. Want to speak to that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I edit my videos. What I what I do when I'm searching for editing techniques is I will try to find the best of the best in the secular realm of social media, Instagram, YouTube. Um, one of the things I didn't mention was that um, somewhere along the lines, it was it was right around where I had visited Blessed Carlo as a tomb. Um, I switched from making long form YouTube videos to making short tor- short uh, form videos on Instagram and TikTok. And yeah. that is when truth treading actually gained popularity and became my full-time job a few months later was because of that that pivot from long form to short form. And we hope to get back to long form eventually, but right now the short form is is working really good. So um, basically there's a point where I realized that the um, Gen Z as a whole watches short form way more. And so that's when the pivot was made. I started looking for editors and content creators that were making short form content really, really well and really, really high quality and made their viewers feel invested into. That was kind of the what I was looking for um, when I was looking for like um, reference creators. Um, so I basically just gathered a bunch of techniques from some of the high quality creators that I had found in the secular world. And I started implementing them in my own talking head videos. And one of the one of my favorite ones that I actually really want to touch on is yeah. all, all of my talking head videos. Um, they have an AI generated ceiling and an AI generated desk. And so the only part of the video that is actually filmed on my camera is this section that you see right here. Um, and then everything above. So that's why if you go by and you look through all of my talking head videos on my channel, on my Instagram account, you'll see that like the, the ceiling is going to be different in pretty much every one. Uh, so that's just a fun little Easter egg that a few people have noticed, but uh, it's a really fun technique that I, I like to use. Basically, what that enables me to do is if I ever did want to upload this video to YouTube as well as Instagram, I have it filmed horizontally on my camera so I can upload it to YouTube horizontally. And then yeah. I can AI create the top and bottom to make it portrait mode for Instagram, TikTok, stuff like that. Genius. Uh, um, you were at C24. I was. What was that like, man? You want to speak to that? <laughs> Yeah, it, you got an iconic photo that we that we shared on Yes Catholic. I mean, it's been shared everywhere. Let's be honest, but yeah, speak <laughs> in general. Right yeah, now. yeah. Um, so a couple of weeks leading up to Seek, I knew I was going, um, and I was trying to think of content ideas. And my friend Kuba w- had called me and basically offered to come film for me, just because he wanted to really be a part of it. Um, and I was really honored by that. So Kuba and I had some some conversations leading up to it. Kuba is also really into the YouTube space and, and social media. And we were thinking of like, what can we do so we can make a daily video at Seek and keep people invested in, in, a, in like some kind of overarching storyline? And somewhere along the lines, we landed on um, what if we like broke the world record for the most amount of daps ever given in a week? Yeah. And so... I started searching Google. Has this ever been done before? Has anyone ever like actually dapped? The closest thing I could find was the most amount of handshakes ever given in a day. And I think it was Teddy Roosevelt or something with 8,000. So I was like, but that's not a dap. So we were were all clear to like go for it. I sent an application to Guinness World Records. um, And (laughs) then we, yeah, we, we flew, um, we flew out to St. Louis and I was like, I was, I was pretty nervous um, just because like if that doesn't land, then it's just kind of cringe. Like if this doesn't land, then it's just going to be me making a fool of myself, holding a sign that says world record daps. And then I like, maybe I have like 300 and I'm like, Oh, this is going to be, th- that could be bad. You know, that could be really embarrassing. But the the first video that I posted the day before seek, um, like it, it performed all right. I think a, a, a lot of people that went to seek did see that video. And so, you know, day one came around and uh, just by the time that I walked into mission way, there was already like a, a 
about 10 people who had recognized me from the video and just like lined up to dap me up. And just within the first like few seconds of starting the world record, we were already like really racking them up. Um, Crazy. But and how'd you, keep, first... how'd you keep track of all the dabs? Like you had a counter? Yeah, actually, I don't. Do you have it? <laughs> yeah, I do have it. Right now it's at uh, 5,000. Well, we had 6,200. It must've got reset at some point. But yeah, this is a clicker that I had in my left are hand. Still, are you still keeping that thing going? Like what's happening here? I should have, but no, right. at some point it got That's messed up. up. So I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just counted every single dap that I've made this year. Um, yeah. But yeah, by day, th- um, oh man, was it day two or day? Yeah, it must have just been on day two. I got a call from Focus and uh, Father Mike had been following truth charting for a, a couple months before. So That's he cool. knew, he like knew about truth charting. When yeah. the moment that I found out Father Mike followed my account, I like threw my phone across the room and told everyone I knew. It was, it was like a, it was like a mom I made it moment. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. then um, here I was day two at Seek and got a call from Focus. And it, uh, the lady on the phone said, um, John, we, uh, we've we received a request. And I, I started to fill in the dots. And I was like, they're going to ask me to stop doing the DAP thing. You know, it, it's causing too much of a ruckus. Like, <laughs> I, they're going to ask me to stop, I bet. And she's no, like, um, we received a request from Father Mike and his team. Like he wants, he, he, w- he would like to meet you and like maybe make some content or something. Is that something that you'd be open for? And I was like, sorry, what? Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the next day we set a time and I met Father Mike Schmitz and he was the 5,000th DAP, which was our goal. That's what we were going for. Um, that was, and that was, five, that was the 5,000th DAP. Yeah. Yeah, Father Mike right. Smith was the five thousandth dap. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, it was is an absolute blast. He shared it on his Instagram account, and so that video got um, just a, like a lot of people saw that video. Um, and so day day three, day four, and day five, um, basically like a, a good portion of people at Seek knew about the dap world record, and uh, we just racked up a whole lot of daps. Uh, and we overshot our our goal by by a good bit. So Seek 24 was like a a really awesome moment um to and very humbling. Like man, uh like I got to experience meeting people who had known about my 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 work. Um like these people like knew what I did. There was a, a guy I met there, I think his name was Ian. He said, like, bro, you're the reason I'm here at Seek. Like I saw one of your videos. You're the reason I'm Catholic. He said, like, I saw one of your videos. I went to my Newman Center and got involved. And now like wow. I'm involved with my Newman Center and I'm here. Um Praise God. And that was just like another one of those moments that that was like just a permission slip that like the Lord is working um through what I'm doing. And that yeah. is really humbling because like I, the only thing that I have to do with it is the surrender. Um, the only thing that I have to do with it is allowing God's grace to, to work through me um, if I can. Um, and so that's, yeah, that was just really beautiful. And it was a yeah. really, really great experience at Seek. Yeah. Speaking of adventure, right? Life with Christ <laughs> is truly a wonderful mm-hmm. adventure. Amen. Advice for someone who wants to start being a digital missionary. Thoughts there, mm. John? The most realistic and hard piece of advice that I got from John Andrew early on when I first started truth charting was commit to it for two years. It's so easy for you to have fire in the beginning, make content for three months and not get anywhere get two views on your, on your content. And then for you to just be like, well, it didn't work. I tried and then give up. Mm -hmm. And that's just not the name of the game when you're working with social media and YouTube. It's, it's commitment, it's consistency. It's, um, I like, that's the reason that truth charting is, is, is like my full-time job right now is because I committed to doing it for two years before I was allowed to give up on it. Um, and like giving up was not necessarily an option because the calling was, was pretty confirmed. Um, but, um, 
that really helped on just the mind on the mental aspect of it, knowing that even though I was six months in, in and I think a year in and really not getting a whole lot of traction, not making um, like not making any money from it. So not it being my full time job, you know, I wasn't able to dedicate as much time because there, there wasn't a whole bunch of money coming in just a year in. And then that second year rolled around. And um, then the growth came with that. Um, and I think we're, we're on the third year now. And now things are just like, are really picking up. Um, yeah. So my, my advice to someone who wants to get into being a digital missionary would be commit to two years about like commit to doing it for two years and don't give up until you your two years. And then my second piece of advice is be ready to pivot. Um, the social media landscape changes like every three months. So just be ready to pivot. There could be a new, it could be a new social media platform that it's gets created next year. And then you have to figure out how to make content in that format and how you, how you navigate that. Um, that's what happened with me was I was trying to make a YouTube channel, but then all of my target audience stopped watching YouTube and started watching short form co content right. on Instagram. So right. I had to pivot. Um, so those are my two main pieces of advice. Yeah. I was shaking my head because uh, that algorithm, you just got to <laughs> tough you stuff. Roll, yeah. You got to roll with it, right? Yeah. Here's Absolutely. a fun, here's a fun, really fun thing um, that, that helped me out too um, was realizing that when you, when you, instead of trying to hit the algorithm, right, especially with Catholic content, because algorithms don't tend to favor uh, religious content, I would say, um, you focus on shareability instead. So mm -hmm. with Instagram, particularly, you can share any post to any story. So try to focus on what can I, what message can I bring forward that young Catholics really, really, really want to share with their friends. And yeah. so the, the message that being Catholic actually is not boring and cringe and corny, like that message is something that young Catholics really want to bring forward. Um, and so when I started trying to focus on that, like what kind of shareable message can I give here? Then um, stories uh, like those reels basically would get posted to a, more people's stories. And, and that helped with, um, just like the, the numbers. Um, and it's also important to realize that not everyone is called to the numbers game. Like not everyone is, is called to, um, to try to like rack up a lot of numbers. Some people are, are called to different ways of evangelism on the internet. And some of that mm -hmm. is like, maybe your account isn't even public. Maybe you're evangelizing to your friends on the internet, on your yeah. private Instagram account, just through your story, sharing the gospel with them. Um, so when I talk about numbers and I talk about the business side of being a social media influencer and stuff like that, I feel very called to do that. I feel very called to pursue excellence in business and in ministry and in social media influencing. Like that's, that's something that like, I think is a, is um, a call that I have and a lot of other people have, but it might not be like the goal for everyone. And it certainly doesn't have to be likes don't equal like how effective your ministry is. Yes. Yeah. It's just different people being part of the body of Christ, different gifts, yeah. different talents. And yeah, absolutely. All right. Last question of the night. What is your hope for the future of our church? Mm. Yeah. My hope for the future of our church is that our young people are filled with so much fire and joy um, that people in the secular world just start seeing us and maybe it, maybe it's not through like how um how unique and um like awesome our theology is maybe it's just like they see how much we love life and how much we love each other um and maybe they see the fire in us and maybe they see the hope that we have in our hearts. And maybe they see um, the ways that we love them, even though they don't agree with us. My hope for the, the future of the church is that like the, the secular world starts looking at Catholics and just seeing like, what, what are they doing? Right. Um, and so I guess maybe, yeah, just like, how can, how can we as a church, um, dive into that hope and joy and put our money where our mouth is and really dive into to ministry to one another too. 
Mm. Amen to that. Well, on the note, brother, I just want to thank you so much for your yes to Jesus and his church. It's just a gift. I mean, I learned stuff tonight. I, the truth charting, <laughs> didn't realize the significance of that. Your stories, man, were just incredible. So thank you for taking the time to, to share tonight. If people want to connect and learn more, how can they go about doing that, man? Yeah, truthcharting.com is the website. And you yeah. can find the YouTube channel. That's just Truth Charting. And then Instagram and TikTok at Truth Charting. That's all. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not going to lie, man. I've, I've totally watched your videos and I've thought as I'm watching them, like teach me your ways. Obi -Wan. <laughs> I, mean, like, <laughs> I don't know if down the road you can do some kind of online course teaching how to, how to go to the next level of social media and whatnot, but man, you've got the skills down. Thank so, you so much. I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, huge. absolutely. So, well, thanks again. Would you be willing to close us in prayer tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. In the name of the father and of the son of the Holy spirit. Amen. Amen. Come Holy, Come Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I just pray for our young people within your church. And I pray that you would instill in the hearts of all within your church, particularly the youth, um, just a, a unique love for you and a unique love for your plan for them a unique love for the journey that you have for them, the adventure that you're calling them to. Lord, I pray over our entire generation, our entire world, um, Christian or not, um, that you would just break into their lives in a way that would make them realize that, um, that what you are calling them to is not boring and that what you are calling them to is a beautiful, adventurous journey um, that is unto ultimately a, um, a life lived, uh, loving you forever. And we ask you this uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the ministry, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or please leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest stories, you can follow us on Instagram at yes.catholic and visit our website, yescatholic.com. If you have benefited from Yes Catholic, please consider joining our Patreon community. Visit patreon.com slash yescatholic. I would like to thank our current patrons for your ongoing prayers, support, and contributions that have helped Yes Catholic reach thousands of souls all over the world each week. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. You have a story. Don't be afraid to share the good news of how Jesus Christ has moved in your life with a family member, friend, or colleague. Give Jesus your yes every single day and watch the ripple effect of the gospel. Join us next week. The journey continues right here at Yes Catholic.